on our teaching just as it was in the days of Noah. We explain this, of course, <clears throat> in greater detail. The ark of Noah was the vehicle of salvation. When all who were to be saved were on the ark, God closed it with his own hand. This is a picture of the church. When the total number of those who are to be saved are saved, the Lord will close the door. Work while you have the light, night will come, no man can work. It's a picture of the church and of salvation, but it is particularly a picture of the church eschatologically at the end of the age. The dimensions of the ark all have spiritual significance. For instance, the 30, the 30 being the number of spiritual maturity. Jesus beginning his ministry when he's about 30, as David began to reign as king when he was 30. The 50 being the number of the Holy Spirit. Uh, again, 300, as in the 300 small gold shields hung by Solomon, the number of the elect and so forth. The dimensions of the ark have typological meaning, but the ark itself is a picture of the church as the platform of salvation that ultimately uh, is going to be replayed historically and prophetically in an eschatological framework when that's it. God says, no more. All who are to be saved are honored and closes it. Now, there are various aspects of this ark that we have to keep in mind. One aspect is family. Only seven people repented at the preaching of Noah, and they were all related to him. But Noah kept preaching anyway, probably for about 120 years by the lunar calendar thereabout, we are told. The church should not expect success as the world counts success. We should expect success as God counts success. Success is faithfulness. Success is faithfulness. Was Noah a successful preacher? Well, by God's standard, yes. By man's standard, no. We all want to see large groups of people being saved, but ultimately, there will be God's faithful remnant. Much the same as the rescue of Lot and his family, much the same as, as many things in Scripture. Um, again, God told Ezekiel the same, that people will not listen to you by and large, only a few will, but tell them anyway. Now, we need to tell them in an effective manner. When we see churches having evangelistic meetings on Sunday night without doing an outreach and simply preaching the gospel to the already saved every Sunday night because that's their church tradition, this is silly. Jesus said, go out to the highways and byways. But if we are evangelizing in a successful manner and going out or in a um, biblical manner and going out to the highways and byways and we don't see the results we would like, do not see that as failure. See it as success if you're being faithful to what God has indeed told you to do. That is the first aspect. The aspect that God is in the business of saving a remnant, ultimately, will Son of Man find faith on earth? He'll find a remnant. Secondly, he's in the business of saving families. Another aspect of the ark that's important is they brought the people in, or they brought the animals in, two by two, species by species because there was going to be a new beginning on the earth. There would literally be another new beginning on the earth. Those who are members of the faithful body of Christ who will be saved will make a new beginning on the earth. There will be a millennial reign of Christ. Before eternity, before the blessings of eternal heaven, when there's a new heaven and a new earth, there will be a millennial reign of Jesus. He will fulfill the Old Testament prophecies of the Messianic age and era. This is very important in dealing with things like bereavement. If a believer, a faithful believer, goes to be with the Lord, remember, they're going to be biologically alive for a thousand years. Before going to eternal heaven, they're going to be alive on the earth again. The separation is only temporary. When we have a loved one in Christ who goes to be with the Lord and we miss them and I wish they could be back for one hour or one day, well, they're going to be back for a thousand years. Those who got on the ark got on the ark with the view of coming back and beginning over. Those who come to Christ need to come to Christ with the idea of 
the meek shall inherit the earth. We're going to come back and begin over. This is a little emphasized but crucially important aspect of the typology of Noah and his ark. I would, again, refer you to the teaching just as it was in the days of Noah to understand the various eschatological implications of the ark. But yes, it does have an ecclesiological meaning. It is a picture of the church. Thank you so much for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless. available through Amazon, and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. First being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be shadows of the beast. Shadows of the beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen. Will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet how the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo, Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, the Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morial catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless. May Jesus be with you.